Let's make it quick this time. What's the best ad blocker for Edge browser, uh, you may ask? At this point, I don't have the answer either. Let's try to find out together. I suggest the following way. I'll take several add-ons from Google search and we'll look at them together one by one. Selecting 8 add-ons. Let's make a list. I'm typing adblock a Microsoft Edge in this search and picking up adblock and adblock plus. These are always the first results for any web browser. There on the Edge add-ons page, I see similar products that have proved to be efficient and popular, AdGuard and uBlock. Back to Google and I see the adblock page. Let me check if they have a free ad blocker for Edge. Yes, they do. Good, so we have 5 add-ons so far. Let me also check the add-ons page, which is quite similar to the Google uh, Chrome Web Store. 225 extensions for ad blocker search. What do we have here? Urban Facebook ad blocker is interesting, though there's only one review and negative about it, but I'd probably check it out. YouTube ad blocker, no user reviews, and the last update in January. 2022? No, thank you. Ghost Tree? I've tried it previously and the vendor is reputable, so let's add it. Ad Remover? Never heard of it, but it has high user ratings and says that blocks all kinds of ads, so let be too. Okay, we have 8 blockers selected. That would be Adblock, Adblock Plus, Adblock, AdGuard, UBlock Origin, Urban Facebook Ad Blocker, Ad Remover, Ghost Tree. One more thing. Similarly to Chrome, Edge has certain ad blocking features. It even looks similar if you go to settings. Curious, but anyway. In settings, find the cookies and site permissions tab, go to ads. Make sure this option, block on sites that show intrusive or misleading ads, is enabled. Same with pop-ups and redirects. Though this won't remove all ads, and that's why we need ad blockers. Now, I'll go through each of the selected add-ons one by one and here I could do a little spoiler. By the end, we'll have such a comparison table uh, containing various data points all in due, so let me proceed. Adblock. Alright, the first one is adblock and the main thing we want to see is how these add-ons actually cope with ads. For demonstration, I will use two conventional websites that are popular and heavy on ads, and YouTube obviously. First, let's a look at those without an ad blocker as is, so to speak. CNN.com, huge ad banner at the top of the page and multiple banners down the page. Investing.com, huge ad banners all around. And a video floating ad, or a pop-up ad, or whatever that is. YouTube, Amazon ad block at the top of the main page. YouTube music banner and of course ads at the very start of popular videos. Even two or in a row, repeated several times throughout the video. You know it well. So, the idea of any ad blocker is to hide those ads. I'm installing Adblock to Edge. The interface is the same as in other browsers. While I'm here on YouTube and now with Adblock enabled, let me refresh and see. No ads in this video, let me check another one, still no ads. And the Adblock counter displays 15 blocked ads on this page. Back to CNN. There are still ads, although different ones. This is strange, so I'm going to settings. Ah, yes, it has this feature, allow some non-intrusive advertising turned on. Adblock being a part of this acceptable ads program working to find sort of a compromise between advertisers and ad blocking users. Anyway, I can turn it off and check again, and now it's all clear. 21 ads blocked in total. The other website investing all clear too. Adblock Plus. Without going into detail, Adblock Plus is a different product than the previous Adblock. As we see, it is free and open source, done by a German company with 66 interface languages. That's a rarity. I'm adding the extension to Edge and heading straight over to Options, since I assume there will be similar acceptable as feature enabled. Yes, so I'm turning it off. Also, I see additional options. Trackers, cookie warnings, push notifications and social media icons. With quick tips next to each one, that's nice. I am setting to block all. There's also an option to block ads in certain languages. Another handy feature that we seldom see in ad blockers. So kudos for that. Let's see what else. Exclusion list, customization options, filter list. So I'd say the title ad block 
plus is really justified. Now I'm going to check the web. CNN. No ads, 44 items blocked according to the ad done. One more sub page, no ads. Investing, no ads as well. YouTube, all clean. And oh, I forgot to check how many ads blocked on investing main page. 16. Bottom line, ABP is a solid and efficient ad blocker. Ad block. Similar name again, but one letter down. Uh, this one is from the Slovak vendor with high ratings and available in 8 languages. As I install, it redirects me to their website page informing about the desktop version for Windows and the ongoing discount 70% off deal which would be $3 monthly or $150 monthly with 1 year subscription. Going back to Edge extension, it is now active and looks as simple as it gets. The ad counter, show ads on this page, toggle and settings. Let's start with settings. Not as extensive as with previous two ad blockers, there's only filters and whitelist. Spyware filter is interesting, but to activate it, you have to buy the pro package. Okay, never mind. Then we have filters for various languages French, Russian, Spanish, Polish, German, and so on. Social media filter, etc. Moving on to performance. Uh, CNN also making sure to refresh the page just in case. No ads visible. 36 blocked according to the ad block counter. Some other random page, also no ads, 22 blocked. Next to investing, also refresh the page, no ads, 9 blocked. YouTube, some Lex Friedman video, loving his podcast to be honest, so a quick shout out, very informative and educational. No ads, 19 blocked. Great results in my opinion. The next one on my list is AdGuard and I'd like to warn you right away that this ad blocker is a Russian product. Immediately after installation it opens a page with uh, key configuration options with uh, on off toggles such as block trackers, social widgets, malicious websites, search ads, etc. And by the way, let me check a Google search result page with and without this last settings I've seen uh, lots of Google ads there before I started this quest for ad blockers. No such ads for now, okay. Back to settings. Next we have filters. Ad blocking, trackers, social widgets, annoyances, for example, pop-ups and banners, security, malicious websites, crypto mining protection, etc. Language specific filters. Stealth mode, allow list, user rules, extra options, nothing out of the ordinary. The interface of AdGuard is compact and in line with other popular ad blockers on the market. So let me visit our three suspects, starting with YouTube. No ads, scrolling through videos a bit, no ads. 58 blocked in the counter, good. CNN, no ads on the main page, 45 blocked. I'm also curious what this filter log option is. I have to reload the page and it shows certain advertising elements that have been blocked, including type, image, URL, and filtering rule applied. Could be useful for some instances, probably. Investing all clean, 11 ads blocked. There's another feature called check website security. It reports whether a site you're using uh, is deemed safe or unsafe and includes data like IP address, server location, last update, child safety rating, uBlock. Next we have another highly popular extension uBlock Argent by Nick Rolls, a software engineer and also a filmmaker based in New Zealand. uBlock is an open source product available at GitHub under public license. Installing to Edge is a matter of seconds and I see its compact interface with a big on off button. This is the smallest window of all ad blocker add ons so far. It shows a website name I'm currently on and the number of blocked ads. Let's go to settings first. As we see, uBlock is rather oriented towards tech-savvy users who could uh, make use of various detailed configurations such as cosmetic filtering, hyperlink auditing, blocking remote fonts, JavaScript elements, and so forth. Although every option comes with guides and tips so anyone can get into it. Filter lists are also more extensive, claiming to contain 80k network filters and 45k cosmetic filters. Six groups of filters are built in, for example, bedware filters privacy fixes etc. Each of them is switchable. Three ad databases with one of them, easy list enabled by default, the other two are AdGuard Base and AdGuard Mobile. It is somewhat surprising to see this here. Malicious website list with thousands of IP addresses. Okay, there's obviously too many things to explore in uBlock. I'm skipping it for now. To see how it works, I'd like to switch gears in regards to test websites. Let me try NewYorkTimes.com and ESPN.com. 
First, without an ad blocker, New York Times has multiple full screen ad banners on its main page as well as on individual pages. However, it is paid so a large window pops up to subscribe. On ESPN, the whole background image on the main page is an ad place and Google AdSense appears in various spots. Now I'm enabling uBlock and going back to New York Times. Refresh. Now I see no more ads, just news articles and the counter says 8 ads are blocked. On subpages, the top banner is hidden as well as their subscription window, but the content is still unavailable. On ESPN, the background advertising is effectively removed and no other ads appear. 15 blocked ads on the main page and 25 on a news page. Also a quick visit to YouTube, a random video with 73k views is displayed ad free while 34 ads are stated to be hidden. Really nice result in my view. A few more features to point out. Block large media elements, block remote fonts, block JavaScript, element zapper mode, element picker, view code logs, and view connected domains. So a big variety of options and tricks available with the uBlock origin. Urban Facebook Blocker. Add down number 6 on my list at this curious little extension by the team whose main product is VPN and this one is called Urban Facebook Ad Blocker, clearly developed towards this social network. Uh, that is no meta or whatever. Facebook ads are known to be notoriously hard to get rid of, so I have serious doubts that this add-on is capable of that, but let's check. Before installing it, let me visit my Facebook feed, typically full of sponsored ads and posts, yeah, like this one or this one, games, shop, restaurants, the usual stuff. Adding the extension now and also removing the previous uBlock that I forgot a moment ago. A little window with just the ad counter. Refreshing the page and scrolling the feed for a while, zero ads blocked and sponsored ads are still present. Maybe I should visit some Facebook page or group to check as well? Still nothing. Let me see any other page besides Facebook, ads are visible and moreover the extension is inactive on other websites. Bottom line, as I have suspected, this pretty much useless. Uh, so one contender has left the chat. Ad remover. Moving on to Ad Remover, a product by the American company who also owns Carl Draw and wins it. So this should be interesting. Only a 7 day trial is available for free, but we can still try it at least. Settings and other options are not accessible though. Pricing is $40 per year. Since I cannot explore the add-on any further, let's proceed to websites and see whether it does its job. CNN, no ads in sight. 42 blocked and also 26 trackers stopped. However, it would be nice to be able to view those trackers. The interface also displays how much traffic I am saving uh, by using Ad Remover. Next, let me visit NewYorkPost.com instead of New York Times because of the paid subscription model where tons of ads are typically present. This overlays windows at the bottom isn't that helpful I'd say, so I'll hide it. Scrolling down the main page, I see no ads and 46 items are blocked according to the counter. ESPN, all clean, 23 ads blocked. Investing.com, 27 ads blocked. And finally, YouTube, all good too, 44 ads blocked, which seems to much to be real. Ghostry. And last but not least, Ghostry, which is one of the most popular ad blockers for Edge with over 500k installs. Also free and paid versions, free implies basic browser protection including ad blocking and blocking preferences and that's enough as for me. Typical interface a bit more widened though. Separate options for blocking ads and blocking trackers. Pause the add-on for 30 minutes for 1 hour and for 24 hours. Settings contain various types of annoyances you can enable disable. Ads, site analytics, Customer interaction tools, chat, email forms, tag managers, audio video content, comment section, content distribution networks, CDN, cookie consent tools, etc. This is awesome and I haven't seen anything like this in other ad blockers. First impression is positive. Now let's test it. New York Post, refresh, scrolling the whole main page, no ads whatsoever and 22 ads blocked. If I switch from simple view to detail view, Ghostory displays the names of those items, trackers and ad 
sources by category, for example, seven ads by Outbrain, Content Square, Pulse Point, etc. Two essential trackers, Adobe Typekit and Google Tag Manager, three site analytic tools like Google Analytics or Live Intent, nine trackers, Sentry, News Connect, Video Player Hub, etc. This is outstanding and here's my reasoning. That is better an ad blocker stating 50 ads removed but proving no data or ad blocking removing 20 ads and listing all of them. By the way, what is this Russian Mars Simpson looking politician? <laughs> LOL, sorry for getting distracted. ESPN, all clean, 9 ads blocked. There's also an extra option in the detailed view I've missed and that is unblock all. A quick visit to CNN. 26 items blocked and YouTube 3 ads blocked on a recommended video, which is more realistic than 44 ads by the previous ad remover in the same situation. Summary. So here we are. I've tried all those 8 extensions for Microsoft Edge. Most of them were efficient except one. Which one I like the most? Actually I have a top 3. Three different ones because of different aspects and benefits. Adblock Plus for efficiency in ad blocking. U block origin for plenty configuration options and open source. Ghost 3 for being highly informative about what ads and annoyances are being blocked and options to configure the behavior. But those are just my preferences, so I had to get some real objective data to analyze and compare those 8 add downs for Edge. I collected the following A. Number of supported browsers, B. Efficiency rating using the online service adblocktester.com, which ranks your ad blocker from 0 to 100 based on how it copes with various types of advertising, C. Data on three major types of ads banners, contextual, trackers that is, whether an ad blocker extension removes those ads or not. D. Page load time, time to load, uh, like the time from Load start to when all sub resources are loaded and ready to respond to user input. Measured through Edge's uh, dev tools, website cnn.com, and E number of ads blocked for the same test CNN website in my case. Results are gathered in this table you see right now on your screen. So what do we have? All extension except one urban perform well, yet there's no clear and obvious leader. In terms of rating, uBlock, Ad Remover and AdBlock have the highest ones. In terms of impact on page load time, Ghostry comes off as the fastest one with AdBlock a bit behind and all the rest fall behind by 4 to 5 seconds. As for the most ads blocked, Adblock Plus and AdGuard seem to be the winners. And what about you? What ad blocker do you use? If you do, maybe you do not block uh, ads on the web at all. If so, tell us why in the comments. And see you in our next videos. Bye.